Yay, new book review starting right now. Today on the 5-Minute Book Review, starring Curtis and Ian, we milk Chuck Klosterman's first outing, that's right, this is Fargo Rock City, a heavy metal odyssey in rural North Dakota. Not an opportunity to go too much deeper here, it's Klosterman's first book, it's his memories growing up and enjoying music's dirty little secret of the late 80s and early 90s, I'm talking about glam rock coin toss to start and Curtis is the winner. We're back that's right this is the first episode of I guess the second season of the five minute book review starring Curtis and Ian back from our hiatus. We're gonna kick off the second season like we started the first season with some Chuck Klosterman. Here we have Fargo Rock City. This was of course Klosterman's first major novel and uh, as we all know Chuck Klosterman is one of my favorite authors but man looking back at this one really doesn't hold up as well as some of the others over time. There's some uh, uh, there's some some Klosterman isms that uh, you, you grow into love, and it's it's in here. But there's a lot of filler I find. Like there's like a good 50 pages where he talks about how much money it would take for you to give him to never listen to certain albums again. And like the first two are kind of funny. Then it just starts dragging. And by the time you get to the end, you're like, really, buddy? For a million dollars, you'd never listen to Appetite for Destruction again? For a Slurpee, I'd never read this book again. I don't know if that was harsh. I really shouldn't rag on it that much. If you like Klosterman, definitely it's a good read, but again, you could tell it's his first. Ian? Yeah, I got tired halfway through it. It's basic premise is it's talking about him starting off, growing up in Fargo, North Dakota, listening to metal in the 80s. Great, okay, that's awesome. I can work with that. The problem is, after a while, yeah, I get it. You, you like this music, it's great, and he just, it's, it talks about different periods in his life and he just keeps repeating like the same point almost over and over again. What I like about books like Sex, Drugs and Cocoa Puffs is that it's a series of essays on a variety of topics. That's when he's at his best. These sort of quick bursts of insight and hilarity into pop culture. This, it's not even so much, it's not a novel, it's just, it's more autobiographical than anything, but it just, it gets tired after a while and you're sort of reading it going, yeah, yeah, I, I get it. And he keeps hammer, basically to me hammering the same point home over and over and over again. Uh, comes up quite frequently in his books, I guess, the metal and North Fargo, North Dakota thing. But this one in particular, it just, after a while, it just really, really starts great and you start asking yourself, okay, move on, can you? Chuck Klosterman, I hate to say it, kind of needs to stop releasing books. Because when this was part of the original trilogy of this, Sex, Drugs, and Co Puffs, and Killing Yourself to Live, easily my favorite author of all time. Those three books were amazing, this one being the weakest link. But then he went on and did four, and Downtown Owl, and the Eating the Dinosaur, and now he's put out kind of more mediocre books than good books. And that's scary as a Chuck Klosterman fan. I mean, he has two that are home runs everybody should own. This is not one of them. No, I mean, well, yeah, I think you're right. I think he's he's gotten to a point where he's found himself being able to market himself to a specific niche, and he's continued doing that. And he knows that no matter what, they'll buy his books. But doesn't mean you shouldn't do them the justice of writing better books. I mean, it's it's not like they're not enjoyable books, but you compare them to something like Sex, Drugs, and Cocoa Puffs, and you just you can't compare. It's 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 unfair to these other books. They're just. The, there's no point to them. Like, you just you get nothing from reading these books. Ian, yeah, as we talked when we reviewed uh, Eating the Dinosaur, I'm really mm -hmm. curious to see where his next book goes because yeah. I really thought Eating the Dinosaur was him sticking it to the fans after nobody liked Downtown Owl because those essays yeah. were so inside his head that the average person yeah. would have no idea what he was talking about. Hardcore Chuck Klosterman fans had no idea you, what he was talking about. But go back and relive the good days. Sex, Drugs, and Cocoa Pops, Killing Yourself to Love, which is a miscarriage of justice. We haven't reviewed that book yet. Now nah, we'll get around to it, I'm sure. But it's, I don't know. I, I think he maybe should think about going more, maybe more of the fiction route. I mean, don't get it wrong, I didn't, Downtown Owl was okay, but I can see him doing a good job of writing fiction if he could write fiction outside of his own head, like you said. Because again, it's Fargo, it's the 80s, and it's, Heavy metal. I mean, all three things are okay, uh, particularly Fargo's okay-ish. But I mean, yeah. it's one of those things. Like, I mean, he could write decent fiction if he could just move past those things. Fargo Rock City, halfway through the book, it's not cute anymore. Don't read it. Read his two good books. Sex, Drugs, and Cocoa Puffs, Killing Yourself to Live. Sleep with those two under your pillow this one. Pass on it. Ian? Pass. Sorry, Chuck.